Hello everyone, and welcome to my third tutorial on how to create full stack web applications. In this tutorial, I'm going to be focusing on setting up your project to support JSON using the Jackson library, and I'm also going to show you guys how to test your controllers using mock MVC uh, component in the Spring test module. So the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to set up Spring so that when we send a uh, request that has uh, JSON contained in it, we'd like that, that JSON to be converted to a Java object. And when we're sending data back to the client with a HTTP response, we'd like that the body of that message uh, contains JSON that uh, was converted from our Java objects to uh, JSON. So, um, the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to include uh, set up um, Spring to include the mapping Jackson to HTTP message converter, so um, as one of the uh, message converters. Uh, so uh, Spring uses message converters to convert between uh, HTTP requests and Java objects, and to convert from Java objects to HTTP responses, and it uh, finds out which kind of converter you need uh, based on the type. And I think it also does it sometimes based on uh, the accept header that you have specified in your request. So I'm going to specify that we're going to use the mapping Jackson to HTTP message converter. And it, in order to do that, all I need to really do is uh, add Jackson uh, to, uh, to, to the uh, class path. Um, now, uh, the re uh, in order for Spring to set uh, up these different uh, message converters, um, you'll need to have the MVC annotation uh, driven tag in your configuration file, or you're going to um, have to uh, use the standalone setup when you're using mock MVC, which I'll show you guys um, in a moment here. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to include the Jackson annotate uh, the Jackson library uh, on our class path. So I'm just going to search a Jackson JSON library, and I'm going to go to the first link here. And um, well, actually, I'll go to the uh, second link. And um, over, if you scroll down, you'll see um, there's three module, uh, three uh, components that you'll need. You'll need uh, Jackson Core annotations and data bind. So I'm going to search the first one on uh, the MVN repository, and I'll select the one from Faster XML and the 2.4 version. Now uh, paste that in your uh, POM file. I'll make a new section here. And I'm also going to uh, specify the other two uh, artifacts, uh, and they are in the same group ID. So I'm just going to copy this and change the artifact ID name. I'm going to use annotations here, and over here, I'm going to use data bind. So if um, Spring, uh, if we have mock MVC. If we have, um, sorry, if we have MVC annotations set up uh, in our uh, Spring configuration, uh, Spring will set up a uh, message converter for us. Uh, the uh, this particular message converter, and um, convert our Java objects uh, to JSON or vice versa when we specify. So, um, uh, so the other thing I'm going to uh, add is I'm going to add. Uh, two dependencies which will allow us to test our controllers. So I'm going to first include the Spring test module, which will uh, include the mock MVC object, which will allow us to uh, send requests to our controllers. So I'm just going to do, um, uh, go to our testing section here and uh, write uh, dependency, and I'm going to write uh, org.springframework, and I'm going to specify the Spring test module. And I'm also going to specify a scope of test. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to include uh, the serverless API. So mock MVC uh, mocks, uh, creates mock objects for certain components in the serverless API so that you can uh, test your controllers outside of a serverless container and also uh, outside of a network. Uh, so you can send requests and see what the responses are all outside of a network or serverless container. So I'm going to include um, the serverless API. Uh, so I'll go over here. I'm going to use the dependency that uh, we have set in our Spring uh, WebMVC artifact. And I'm going to go down here to the bottom. And um, they have uh, now uh, Spring WebMVC has a dependency 
uh, of uh, the servlet has a dependency for uh, on the servlet API and it has a scope set to provide it. Since we want the servlet API to be provided by our servlet container when we deploy our project, but um, for right now when we're doing tests, we want uh, the servlet API on our uh, class path during testing. So I'm going to copy this over and change the scope. So I'm going to go back to our project here, and I'm going to go to our testing section, and I'm going to change the scope to test. So now that we, so now we have uh, these uh, two dependencies set up so that we can use mock MVC, and we have uh, these dependencies set up so that we can uh, use JSON processing. So uh, now I'm going to show you guys how you can uh, use mock MVC to uh, simulate uh, requests to your controller. Uh, but first I'm going to delete and uh, some of these classes uh, that we used to create in the previous tutorial. I'm going to delete uh, car test. And I'm also going to delete calculator, car, and engine over here. And I'm going to rename our test controller to blog entry controller. And this will form the uh, basis for uh, controllers in uh, later tutorials. And uh, we'll fill this out more as we develop our application. So I'm going to create a test directory here. So Maven can find our tests. And I'm also going to create a Java source directory here. And inside there, I'm going to create a, a test class called uh, in the tutorial.mvc package called uh, blog entry controller test. Now, um, in order to uh, test our controller, we're going to need an instance of it, and we're also going to need an instance of mock MVC. So, in order to create an instance of our blog, our blog entry controller, I'm going to use Makito to inject the annotation uh, to inject the controller, and this will allow us to inject mocks later on. So. Uh, you use the int inject mox annotation to inject a concrete implementation into your field. I'll specify a blog entry controller here. And I'm going to specify a setup method. And inside our uh, setup method, I'm going to uh, use makito annotations.init so that we can inject our uh, controller. Makito annotations .init mox and add uh, uh, place uh, this uh, the this instance into uh, the uh, parameter, and um, the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need uh, to create our mock MVC object. So I'm going to create a private variable here. And over in here, I'm going to write mock MVC. And to build it, we use uh, something called mock MVC builders class, which has a static function that allows us to build two kinds of mock MVCs. Uh, I'm going to uh, specify the standalone setup. Web application, web app context setup allows you to specify a configuration file for your mock MVC environment, uh, where standalone setup will set up a mock MVC uh, environment. Uh, that will allow you to use, um, use it, it will still allow um, create some default message converters for you and um, allow you to um, um, uh, uh, have annotations uh, par uh, um, recognized and uh, stuff like that. So um, I'm going to specify uh, the controller as the argument and then I'm going to build it. So that gives us our mock MVC object. Now I'm going to create a test method so that we can uh, see that uh, um, that our requests are being sent. Uh, I'm going to uh, now before I continue, I'm going to use uh, something called uh, mock MVC request builders class so that we can use method chaining to build our request. So I'm going to go up here and import static mock MVC request builders, and we'll import all those functions, and we'll also want to import uh, static um, the result uh, builders which will allow us to uh, use method chaining to validate the result of our um, of our request so write down uh, result mock MVC result matchers and um, I'm going to also um, in import a uh, something from the 
uh, result handlers um, Makamisu class in a second here. Um, so um, we'll go ahead and uh, go to your test class and we're going to use the mock .perform function and uh, then we specify uh, the request builder function in here. So I'm going to uh, go over and here and write uh, slash get. So this is using a request builder um, set, uh, method chaining to build our request uh, that we're going to pass inside the perform function. So um, if I use method chaining, I can specify other kinds of uh, things I'd like to do uh, for this particular request. We can set an accept uh, uh, media type and um, different other things. So um, I'm going to uh, specify the get method at the URL, and I'm going to specify a, a URL test, which is the same, uh, which is the um, request mapping we already have set up. And I'm going to uh, use a result handler. Now you can use uh, and expect to um, expect uh, 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 check uh, for certain kinds of output, but for now I'm just going to use a result handler which will print uh, the request and the response. And I'm going to specify the print result handler. I'm going to import that from the mock MVC result handlers uh, class. Uh, now we're also going to have to add an exception, a uh, checked exception to our test since uh, mock MVC throws one. And uh, now we should be able to uh, verify this works. I'm not going to be using uh, Maven over here for uh, running our test. I'm going to be using IntelliJ IDEA. Um, now um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and run this. And uh, you can see that um, when I send a request, uh, of, uh, you can see what mock MVC is doing here. It's creating a uh, mock HTTP servlet request and a mock HTTP servlet response. And it um, sends uh, to the, uh, it shows, uh, be, by using the uh, print function, we can actually see what the servlet request is. So this is, um, we're, we're requesting something from the test URL. And in the response, you can see we get a status code of 200, uh, which means uh, that uh, which means OK, and it means that our uh, mapping is working. That it is otherwise, if we specified something else, it would return a 404. Like if I specify test two, which we haven't really made a URL for that, so you'll see that we get a uh, 404 not found error. So uh, it's mapping correctly, and uh, I'm just gonna erase that too. So we're back to where we started, and um, so now we should uh, now this um, should return 200, and we can act, use this to um, show that uh, we are converting uh, between uh, JSON and Java objects correctly. So um, in order to specify that you'd uh, like to convert between a JSON object and a Java object, uh, we're going to use message converters. Now I'm going to specify in uh, here. Uh, that uh, I'm going to use uh, certain hint. There's certain ways to hint to MockMVC that you'd like an object to be converted using uh, HTTP message converters. So uh, one way of doing that uh, is you uh, use something called a uh, response entity, and you specify a type. Now I I'm just going to specify object for now, but um, yeah, you can specify any kind of class in here. Um, but uh, first, I'm going to um, create a class that we're going to actually uh, re return so that we can see it's being properly converted. So I'm going to create a class called um, and the entities package entity um, tutorial dot entities dot blog entry and we'll use this class uh, throughout later tutorials um, to uh, as a, a component in the blog blogging application we're going to be making and I'm going to add a field here and it's important that you generate getters and setters so that uh, Jackson can uh, read your uh, class variables and convert between JSON representations. So um, go back to our MVC controller class and uh, create the blog entry and set the title. And then we're going to return that entry using a response entity. Alright, so if everything works correctly, 
Uh, and the, because we have the Jackson HTTP message converter um, as one of our message converters, um, now, um, just to clarify, a standalone setup is uh, creating a, a series of default message converters for us. Um, it's not uh, using our um, file over here, our MVC dispatcher serverlet configuration file. It's um, setting up a series of default message converters, and it's going to set up a Jackson message converter if Jackson's on the class path. So I'm going to um, demonstrate to you guys here that uh, JSON is being converted properly. So let's run this. And uh, if everything worked in response, we should see some JSON. Okay, so it's working. Um, the other thing um, we need to, I, I'd like to show you guys is like the other uh, way of specifying uh, that you'd like to return JSON. So I'm going to specify over here um, uh, something called response body. I mean, sorry, uh, response, yeah, response body. And then we can specify the object here. And then we can just uh, return the object. Now, if I run this, uh, we should still get a uh, have a JSON converting. So uh, you can see um, we still have a blog entry here, uh, properly converted uh, to JSON. And uh, the other thing I want to show you guys is how to um, specify that you'd like uh, to receive uh, an object, uh, a JSON object. So you use something called a request body annotation. And then you specify the blog entry type and the entry that you want to receive. So when somebody posts to this URL, uh, we'll be able to get grab the blog entry um, using uh, this. Will this will specify um, we'd like to use a message converter to recur uh, to convert the body in the request to a blog entry object. So I'm going to uh, specify that we'd like to use post here using a, a request method. Uh, in Spring. So this will um, accept post uh, method, uh, method. And um, I'm going to, instead of using this uh, object, I'm going to just use uh, the one in the parameter. So uh, this should demonstrate that we are receiving, sending and receiving uh, JSON and it's being uh, converted correctly. So uh, go over to our uh, blog entry controller test and um, uh, instead of specifying get, I'm going to specify post, and I'm also going to specify a content type, a content um, of. Uh, I'm going to specify. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to specify title. Okay, so now we are sending JSON. So um, if I run this, uh, we should uh, have it uh, uh, properly converting. So let's try this. Um, I think we uh, need to, all right, uh, HTTP media type not uh, support exception. So I'm going to uh, specify that uh, accept header so that uh, it knows that uh, I need a content type so that it knows what kind of content uh, we're sending. So I'm going to specify content type media type application JSON. And this should run now. And um, uh, also, um, I, we want to specify the uh, kind of, uh, we get a status code 400, um, not acceptable. Um, um, let's see. Okay, um, actually, um, status code 400 uh, means a bad request. So um, what we're going to, um, so I think what's going on here is that uh, JSON isn't properly formed. So yeah, we're missing a uh, bracket here. So I'm g uh, this should uh, work now uh, if we run this. Okay, so um, 
All right, so you can see that uh, it is uh, returning the JSON object that we sent. So we are converting to and from JSON uh, successfully. So JSON is uh, set up in our project, and we can now use it uh, for our controllers. Um, one thing I'd like to show you guys uh, before I um, end this tutorial is I'd like to show you guys how to use JSON path to uh, check various parts of uh, the object that you're receiving is correct. So uh, JSON path is a way of grabbing certain elements out of a uh, jack JSON object. So um, uh, in order to use it, I'm going to need to include JSON path on our cl class path. So go ahead to and go to Google and search for JSON path. And I'm going to click on the first link here. And on the bottom of the page, there's um, two dependencies we'll need. And uh, this is integrated with mock MVC, so we can uh, use mock MVC to verify that the expected output is correct. So uh, go ahead and go to your POM file and uh, specify these two dependencies in your test section. And <clears throat> And uh, then go to your blog entry controller test, and we're going to use the and expect uh, method. And and expect, and uh, we're going to specify uh, JSON uh, path here, so um, a result matcher. So uh, JSON path, and then. Uh, you specify a, a JSON path expression in here. So uh, the way you grab elements out of JSON path, um, there's it's you can grab fairly complex kinds of uh, data. But uh, for now, I'm just going to show you some really basic uh, uh, JSON path expression. So uh, go ahead and uh, write uh, dollar sign, which means the root element of uh, what you're trying to get var variables from, and then specify dot, meaning you'd like to get um, a member of that root element. So we're going to specify title, and we're going to use a hamcrest matcher to verify that it is a uh, test blog title. So I'm going to use it right down is here and import that. And you want the matchers class from org.hamcrest. And um, I'm going to specify uh, test blog title. Let me just uh, put my, my code, code here. All right, so um, now this should uh, test that the ele title element is test blog title, and I'll just show you guys uh, that that's working, and also uh, break it so you guys can see that it uh, doesn't. It um, makes our test fail if we specify an incorrect title here. So I'm going to specify uh, test uh, blog title uh, wrong. And you can see it fills. It says um, expected is test blog title wrong, but was uh, test blog title. So um, basically, uh, this is uh, shows you guys how you can um, test your controllers, and also um, it helps a lot even for prototyping. Even if you aren't like do strictly testing, you can kind of use this like a REST mock MVC, like a REST client, and then you can use JSON path if you want to do some more uh, testing on your output. Uh, JSON to verify that it's uh, correctly formed. Uh, anyways, um, uh, that concludes this tutorial for, um, for now. I'm going to um, use this uh, as a base for uh, creating uh, this uh, tutorial as a basis for creating uh, later tutorials, and which will use this functionality to help uh, build our uh, blogging application. Anyways, if you guys found this video helpful, um, uh, like and subscribe to this channel, and uh, thank you for watching.